Hey everybody. So Liz Truss's first day here as Prime Minister of this country. So already she suggested that she's going to freeze energy bills for everyone. That includes households and businesses. Well, the issue with that is, is that if you freeze the prices as they are now, lots of people can't afford the prices as they are now. And what does that mean, freezing your energy bills? Is she just going to freeze the energy bills that you'll get the same bill every month? Or is she just freezing the cost of energy? Because they're two completely different things. Because even if she freezes the cost of energy, that's how much you pay per unit of energy that you use. That would still be too expensive for most people because you would still be getting a high bill because there's no cap on how much you can actually be charged. That's that's in that's homeowners and in business. It, it all depends on how much energy you actually use to how big your energy bill is going to be. So freezing the cost of energy isn't really going to do much for anybody because lots of people at the minute can't afford their energy bills as they are, let alone going through the winter. And let's look at that. She's on about freezing bills from whenever until the 1st of January. January to March is usually the coldest time of the year. So she's going to be unfreezing energy bills just at a time when people need them most. So this solution isn't a very good solution. And the government is always tackling the symptoms of the cause and not the cause itself. It's well within Liz Truss's power to scrap net zero policies. Get rid of it completely. Cut the green taxes from our bills, which would slash the cost of our energy in half. And it would solve the energy crisis overnight. But she's not doing that. She's tackling the, the, the symptoms of the energy crisis in this. I want to point something else out as well, and this is something that some people didn't quite understand and why it's a poor solution to the situation. So if you freeze energy bills, then the energy companies still need to be paid the difference. So Liz Truss has already said that taxpayers are going to have to foot the bill for the difference that the energy companies get. So that means higher taxes for us as well. Already on top of the taxes we're paying now. So we're already at record high taxation. And the Conservative Party is supposed to be a party of low taxation, which is, which is something you need to wrap your heads around because it just doesn't make sense why they keep wanting to print money all the time instead of tackling the solutions, like I said before. And what happens? What happens in Jan on January the 1st when energy bills go back to go back to normal after she's unfrozen energy bills. Does that mean we're going to then be slapped with an even higher increase in tax on top of the already high energy bills, on top of the already high taxation that we're already facing? Now you can see the issues with that solution of freezing energy bills now, can't you? When a, a decent intelligent solution would be not to pay off the energy companies, but simply scrap net zero completely and get rid of the green taxes. Getting rid of the tax is the way you deal with this. Not handouts, not handouts to people or anything like that. You need to tackle the root causes of these problems. And people are saying, give Liz Truss a chance. Give a chance. She's only just come in power. Well, I take actions over words. You know, I judge people on their actions, not on what they say. Because actions are what deliver. Words don't deliver. We've had this with Boris Johnson. He talked the talk, but wouldn't walk the walk, would he? He was a big talker, but when it came to delivering what he promised, he didn't do it. And people are talking, well, the, the, the BBC, the BBC and, and the Labour Party, they're going to try and remove it just like they did Boris Johnson. You know how you fight that? You know how you stop that from happening? You defund the BBC. You destroy their power base. You do what Boris Johnson said he was going to do. You defund the BBC. You take the power away from them. And the Labour Party, let's face it, right? The Labour Party, as it presently stands, is in no shape to be in power. It's unelectable. It's completely unelectable. It's almost bankrupt. Its grassroots members have left the party because they no longer believe in what it stands for. And the way you defeat the Labour Party 
is by doing what the people ask you to do. That destroys their narrative completely. If you do what the people tell you to do, take control of the borders, send back the immigrants, you will win over the people. And that is something the Labour Party cannot do. That's how you fight Labour. Not with more promises, not with broken promises, by doing what you actually say you're going to do. But I don't believe that's going to happen. I don't believe that's going to happen. Lots of people said, and I believe this, that Liz Truss is just another World Economic Forum puppet. And that may be so, and I believe that is so. That the World Economic Forum has edged its bets. It had its tentacles wrapped around Rishi Sunak. It had its tentacles wrapped around Liz Truss. It edges its bets. So whoever got into the Prime Minister's position... The World Economic Forum always wins because they're, they're always going to have their influence. Even if they don't directly influence Liz Truss, then you, you can bet your bottom dollar that they've got influence over her advisors and people close to her to implement these insane policies that they want to introduce. So I won't be voting Conservative or Labour in the next general election. I'll be voting for New Blood. I'll be voting for the Reform Party. That's who I'm going to be voting for. Because you have to vote for the change that you want to see in the world. I, I don't believe in our voting system. But the least I can do is not vote for the status quo. Try and change things. I don't think it'll do anything, to be honest with you. I really don't. I think, regarding the political class, I think we've got the worst political class and the worst political system in history as we presently have it. It doesn't serve the people. It doesn't serve me and you anymore. It serves itself. And that's quite evident from the last two years of how they've been treating the people of this country. It's been shameful the way we've been treated. It's been shameful how our elderly have been treated. It's been shameful how the, the hard-working taxpayers of this country have been treated. We've been treated with nothing but com contempt. We, we've, we've got a health service that we can't access, that we pay out of the nose for. We've got a police force that doesn't serve us, that is, is, is not fit for purpose at all. We've got a civil service that's supposed to implement the policies the government makes, and they're refusing to do it. Uh, the whole system, from top to bottom, is broken. It's completely and utterly broken. And I've lost complete faith in the whole of our political class. And I'm not alone in this. A lot of people are politically homeless like I am. There's not one party out there that I want to vote for, really. I know I said I'd vote for the Reform Party, but I, I just don't know anymore. I don't know. All, all I know is, is that we have to look after ourselves now because we can't rely on the people in power to do that anymore. They look after their own self-interests. Anyway, I've rambled on. Enough. This is Vindicator signing off.